In the second video, I want to discuss uh, random number generators. Specifically, we'll cover what pseudo-random numbers are and um, a variety of, of uh, pseudo-random number generators and how to optimize them. Okay, so random numbers are uh, used quite often in uh, computational methods. Uh, we often need some value of x that obeys a distribution associated with some probability density function. Um, so this is generally referred to as random number generation. And the algorithm that we use for generating random numbers is referred to as a random number generator. Now, random number generators are extensively used uh, in numerical methods, but also a variety of computational techniques. Uh, simulation, particularly of, of uh, systems that exhibit some sort of noise or unpredictable behavior. Um, optimized searching and sorting algorithms are often randomized. Uh, probabilistic algorithms like Monte Carlo methods, which we'll discuss later, uh, as well as high dimensional integration and uh, computer graphics and video games for procedural animation, cryptography, and um, uh, machine learning and optimization techniques, uh, particularly genetic algorithms. The problem is that digital computers are deterministic. Algorithms can't generate actual random numbers. So instead, we're relegated to using uh, pseudo-random numbers. And these are numbers that seem random and can be used in place of random numbers for most applications. So the, one of the simplest uh, techniques for generating random numbers is uh, called a linear congruential generator. This is a deterministic algorithm for generating a sequence of numbers that appears random. So this is the, the general formulation of an LCG. And what an LCG does is generate a string of numbers that appears random. Now, this is just a, a linear expression, a times a, a, random, a previously generated random number plus c. And the modulo operation, we'll explain what that does, um, uh, how that behaves later, but the modulo operation is just a, a standard function that you can use in c that returns the remainder of a division of uh, one operand by the second. So here, m is the modulus. That's what the uh, leading term is divided by. And then the mod operation takes the remainder of this term. Uh, a is a multiplier that is between 0 and m. C is referred to as the increment, also between 0 and m. And x0, which is the initial number that's um, uh, specified, is referred to as the seed. So here's an example of a linear congruential generator and the sequence of numbers that, um, that it produces. So if we have a modulus of 7, um, a multiplier of 3, an uh, increment of 1, and a uh, seed of 1, the LCG is just expressed as this, as this linear uh, expression with the modulus operation. So the first number that's generated is the seed. That's 1. The second is the seed times the uh, multiplier plus the increment uh, mod, mod 7, which is 4. Uh, the next value is 6, and then 5, then 2, and 0, and then 1 again. Now what's going to happen is since the seed is, uh, the previous random number is placed uh, as a component in this expression, when we hit 1, which are, is our original seed, all that's going to happen is we're going to start looping uh, over this sequence again. So once we hit the seed, then we're going to generate this uh, same sequence over and over. Now let's take a look at a multiplicative linear congruential generator. This is a simpler version of an LCG that has an increment of 0. So this is the expression for a, an MLCG where we just have a multiplier and a modulus. So if we want to calculate a sequence of terms from an MLCG with a um, modulo of 9, a multiplier of 2, and a seed of 1, then uh, the, uh, again, the first random number that's generated is 1, followed by 2, then 4, then 8. And here's where the modulo operation comes into effect. Once the value gets, uh, the, the 
uh, random number gets bigger than uh, than the modulo, it ends up looping around again. Uh, but again, once we hit the seed, uh, the sequence starts uh, repeating. So here's what that looks like graphically. This will show you uh, what the modulo operation does. Um, so if we uh, start with an initial seed of one, the increment basically multiplies our, um, our value, our original seed by two. Um, then once our value is two, multiplies it by two again, this gives us a value of four, and then eight. Now here's where the modulo operation comes into effect. Um, what happens is when we multiply eight by the, um, by the multiplier, this gives us 16, but 16 ends up being larger than nine, so, this, um, so there is a remainder term, and that remainder term in this case is seven. Uh, then uh, we apply the multiplier and modulo again, and this uh, loops around this ring to five, and then finally back to one, where the, the sequence is gonna repeat itself. Now, if we want to ultimately maximize this sequence, um, there are a couple of rules that we would have to follow. So for a multiplicative linear congruential generator, we can get a maximum period up to m minus one if the um, seed x zero is co-prime with m. So basically, it, uh, one of these numbers has to be prime or they, they can't be divisible, um, they mutually can't be divisible by anything except one. So if one of them is prime, then, then they're effectively co-prime. Uh, the multiplier a has to be a primitive root modulo m. That is a mathematical term that's that's kind of beyond the scope of this class. We're not gonna not going to worry too much about that. Uh, but there are ways to to calculate this. So so if we'd like to maximize our ability to seed a random number. Uh, generator, then what we'd like to do is select a large prime number as the modulus m. This would allow us to select any seed value since if m is prime, any seed value that we select is going to be co-prime with m. The only number that's going to be divisible by both of them is 1. So this allows us to use all possible values for our seed x0. Now, one number that works uh, nicely for this is the Mersenne prime, which fits nicely into a 32-bit unsigned integer, and that Mersenne prime, m31, is 2 to the 31 minus 1. So this expression is, is referred to as a Mersenne prime. It's 2 to the something minus 1. Um, there are several uh, prime numbers that, uh, like the highest prime numbers that, that are known, I believe, are, are Mersenne primes. Um, now there's a, a publication, Park and Miller, that um, uh, specifies a, minim, uh, a minimal standard generator, uh, which uses a primitive root modulo m31, and it uses the seven to the fifth value, or 16807, as the, um, the multiplier, which is a primitive root modulo m31. Uh, so this uh, minimal standard generator is a, a commonly used uh, version of the RAND function in C. Now, if we want to maximize uh, the period of an LCG, uh, because we have an increment, this gives us a little more flexibility. So an LCG can achieve a period of at most m, so we have a larger possible period with an LCG. But in order to satisfy this, we have to you uh, we have to rely on what's called the hull doble theorem, which specifies that the increment and m must be co-prime. Um, a minus one has to be divisible by all prime factors of m, and if a minus one is a multiple of four, or a minus one must be a multiple of four if m is a multiple of four. So in this case, the whole Doble theorem gives us uh, no dependence on x0, so we can select any seed that we want. Um, but if we want to use the uh, maximum number, uh, get the maximum period, uh, we'd like to use uh, a modulo of 2 to the n, where n is the number of significant, uh, or the number of bits that we have avail available in our um, 
in whatever register we're using to store the random the random unsigned integer. Now, remember from our uh, previous lectures that we can perform this modulo operation by keeping the n least significant bits, essentially by forcing an overflow. So if we want to calculate 18 modulo 8, um, what we can do is stick uh, these uh, uh, stick the binary representation of 18 into a 3-bit register, which uh, gives us uh, 2 to the n possible values. Um, if it's a 3-bit register, it'll give us 2 to the 3, which is 8 possible values. And so if we stick this larger number, uh, this 5-bit number, into a 3-bit register, it will effectively perform the modulo 8 operation, giving us the modulo, uh, the modulo value of 2 uh, using very little computation. We just have to perform a cast. And so here's another example with 27. Here's 11011 is the binary representation of 27. If we stick that into a 3-bit register, this performs a modulo operation of um, mod 2 to the 8 or mod 8 uh, by keeping the least significant bits uh, resulting in a value of 3. Uh, and here's another example if we want to calculate modulo 16, which is a 4-bit number, 2 to the 16. We can stick the same value into a 4-bit register uh, to uh, keep the least significant bits 1011 to give us the uh, mod 16 result, which is 11. So this can essentially all be done by casting a value as an unsigned integer. Um, either a 32-bit or 64-bit unsigned integer in C or C++. All right, so there are a few problems that we have to be aware of for LCGs and MLCGs. And the first and most obvious is that they're, they're deterministic. If you know the algorithm, this allows you to predict the sequence of uh, random numbers that's generated. So all you have to know is the algorithm and any previous random number, and you can then predict that sequence. Um, so periodic sequences are always generated, um, but also when you're using a modulus of 2 to the n, lower order bits actually have a lower period. So you'll see the uh, lower order bits uh, repeat more often. Uh, and so some of the least significant bits have periods of 2, 4, or 8. Um, another thing is that in high dimensional spaces, um, if you generate random numbers uh, at, like, say, x, y, z coordinates uh, by generating a series of random numbers, these random numbers will actually exist in parallel planes in this higher dimensional space. Um, and this gets pretty bad as you scale up the number of dimensions. So if we have a, if we're working in a k minus 1 dimensional space, we'll have at most the kth root of m planes generated. So if we have a series of three-dimensional points and we're using a 32-bit uh, linear congruential generator, uh, so for three-dimensional points, uh, it, this will generate about 256 planes in this three-dimensional space. Um, but if we move up to, say, a 10-dimensional space, uh, we'll be stuck with seven to eight uh, planes where these numbers will be generated in. So in general, you don't want to use these types of random number generators for encryption or uh, for high dimensional scientific applications.